CataractCoach.com. Severe iris prolapse causes some iris damage there. This complication has happened to 100% of cataract surgeons. So let's try to learn together. You see a small pupil case, and the patient has also a very light colored iris. And you can see there's a little bit of motion there, movement in the iris. So it's certainly a little bit of a floppy iris type of case here. As you do the higher dissection, look at that. You've got iris prolapse immediately. So this is probably a sign here that you're going to have to do something. You may want to put in some iris hooks here, especially there sub-incisionally. You can see you already lost some iris pigment from the posterior surface of the iris. And then being careful here, going with the phaco probe. Oh, don't hit the eye. Oh, you got to be very cautious here. And again, we've all suffered through tough cases like this. And I think in a situation like this, I, yeah, I'd go to the side portal like that, get the iris out of the way. We've obviously spread the video up here. And now the probe's in the eye, but again, that iris is going to come down. That pupil's coming down. Are you beautiful chop there in the bag, removing these pieces, being very... Oh, look at that. See that floppy iris now under the phaco probe is coming towards the port, and we're getting some damage here of the iris. Now, again, again the question is, what are you going to do here? And at this point, the iris is going to continue to just be in your way. You may want to just stop at this point and just put in the iris hooks. Just get the remaining iris tissue just out of your way. Give yourself a lot more space and room here because now, look at the iris. It's lost all its tone. It's going to keep it going right into the phaco pro. Oh, look, even prolapsing through the para. Now, this is a patient with a very tough situation here. What are you going to do? Yeah, I think your answer is we need to put in some iris hooks just so you can, there we go, so you can operate to so make your opening here for iris hooks. Remember, it's not like a regular parasitase. You want to aim those a little bit farther down. And you can even make them smaller. And you want to aim it down there and get in a couple iris hooks here, I think. I just go ahead and put in all four. I put the two sub-incisional and then two opposite you so you can have a pretty good exposure just to finish up this case. Now, there's studies that have been shown that in patients with iris prolapse, you're more likely to have issues not only with iris damage, but also posterior capsule damage. The rate of posterior capsule rupture is higher in these floppy iris cases, so you've got to be very cautious here. Hey, did I tell you about our podcast, top podcast in all of ophthalmology? I promise you'll love it. I know you keep saying, gosh, why do you keep saying the podcast? Po because it's that good. I think you will be amazed. It's only an hour a week. Anyway, back to our case here. So now getting the rest of the nucleus out, taking your time here. And you may want to even tighten up those iris hooks more just to pull the iris right out of your way. You can even put sometimes a sub-incisional iris hook. But being cautious here, there you go. Nucleus is out pretty good. Now, what are you going to do with the iris damage here? Well, the first thing is you just finish the cataract case. You can always come back. You don't have to fix it today. So you can go ahead and clean up your bimanual IA. I like that idea, especially if you can avoid the main incision here. And you can see, look, the iris is still prolapsing at the main incision. You got a little bit of a leak of fluid there. But once you get the lens in here, you can evaluate what's the iris look like. You could put some sutures in now, 10-O polypropylene, and you could bring do a little bit of a pupiloplasty there to try to close that gap, or you can always come back and do it at another time. You don't have to do everything at once. You can just finish the cataract for now and then see what you get here. And again, remember, 100% of cataract surgeons have had this complication. If you're watching this, you know you've had this complication, and if you haven't, it means you don't operate enough or you're too early in your career. Give it time. I promise you'll run into this. So again, what did we learn in this case here? I think the putting in the hooks earlier would probably be better, probably makes life a little bit easier if you could get the hooks in fast. And then here, here at the end, you're going to be more prone to getting more iris prolapsing out of the incision, so you may want to put a 10 nylon to suture up the main incision here, too. So it looks like the lens is in the bag under the rexes. So that looks good. But, yeah, be cautious here. It's just going to prolapse. So bimanual IA to, oh, yeah, pull that out of the incision. That's for sure. At this point, yeah, I think the patient's going to benefit from pupiloplasty. We've had, fe we've had featured uh, cases on Cataract Coach where we show you how to fix this sub-incisional iatrogenic iris damage. And you basically fix it by placing a few sutures of 10 polypropylene across it and kind of bringing the pupil down there. Yeah, you can see, look how translucent it is. All the pigment from the backside has been gone. And so this is a tough case. Again, I think the patient will still be okay. Important to get the iris out of the incision like it was done now because you don't want that to act as a wick and pull ocular surface bacteria and things inside the eye. So that looks good. Cleaning all that viscoelastic up. And yeah, I'd say probably finish the case here, come back another day and do a bit of a pupiloplasty. It looks like about two clock hours, maybe two, three clock hours. So you could certainly do a pupiloplasty and bring the pupil down sufficiently here. And I remember, if you see a patient like this who had this done on the first eye somewhere else, and now you're seeing them for surgery on the second eye, don't think you're any different. The same thing is going to happen to you. The same thing that happened to the first surgeon, 
You give that surgeon the benefit of the doubt because when you do the second eye, you'll get the exact same issue. Remember, a lot of this is due to patient protoplasm. So here at the end, maybe a little tiny burps of viscoelastic, just keep it out of the incisions. Let's see, make another pair over here. What are we doing over there? Just to bring the iris out, maybe? Oh, that's a tough case. Again, wow, a lot of learning in this tough case. Do appreciate you watching, and um, wow. Leave a comment below. What would you do here? And remember, check out that podcast, Top Podcast and All of Ophthalmology for a reason.